we're talking about some good stuff today. What That's is right. it? Uh, passwords, actually. Passwords. Well, first, uh, I'm Tim. I'm Jake. And we're talking about passwords. Gave him coffee this morning. Passwords! Talk yes. to me, man. Passwords. So, um, you know, we uh, more and more need to log into services online. A ton and of websites. We've got our own CMS services we log into. Personal. From NCYs to email yeah. to the intranet. They all require a password. Yeah. And so we want to talk about some ways to manage it and to make sure that you are keeping your password. That is secure. awesome. By the way, the title is Passwords. Passwords. And, and you, you see here. symbols and numbers and all so sorts I, of stuff. I, I use best practices in creating oh, a password. Okay. Pretty cool. However, uh -oh. the word password should never be used uh, for passwords. You know, we should also preface this entire podcast with that idea. Please don't use any of these since we will be posting this ad on the internet. Just there is a, so that you know about that one. All right. Also, uh, we should let you know about what not. To, oh, not not that. We should give you some site specifications first. Yes, Sorry, many most most web services um, require certain things with your password. Yeah. Um, like case sensitivity. Definitely. So easy. if you Upper use case. capital or lower, you got to know which yeah. one it was. You for should each use character. you should use symbols. Uh, S dollar signs. Most sites don't accept the symbols. Symbol. Those and things it are creates a, that much more variability and that much more difficulty in hacking it. Even just throwing in a simple. Number makes all the difference in the world. Can can really up the security of your uh, your password. Yeah. The character count, the number of characters used. Most sites require. Was it you said you used seven? I was using seven, word. and I needed to do one more. So eight yeah. seems like a standard now. Yeah, at least eight. Between eight and twelve is always a good. So go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm, not so much. I'm using numbers, Jake. Well, let's find out just how secure that is. That is a good idea. We actually have a, a website we found. There okay. are many out there. This is passwordmeter.com. You know what I liked about passwordmeter.com is you type in one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, is that it tells you what you're doing. That's a 4% security level, by the way. Two to 4% security level. Um, Jake, I'll be back in a minute. i got to go chase my email. <laughs> that blows. So I really like this site, Jake, as you type in the next one. Um, it, it gives us, if you're using uppercase or lowercase, numbers, symbols, if numbers or symbols are in the middle, and, it, and then it gives you how strong you think it is. Yeah. So what did you just type in? I just typed in 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, 4, 5, 6. Oh, so a little bit rendition on the 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. A little different, and yeah, that's 59% uh, yeah, security. That's not bad. So our goal is to get you up towards the 75 to 100% yes, yes. in the security layer. So, so let's we are, uh, talk real briefly about what not to do. You don't yes. use birthdays, all right? Don't put out there your birthday. Everybody can probably find that. In fact, some of the things we're talking about in the what not to do may give you a high security rating on this website. However, if someone knows you, yeah. they'll be able to hack it. Yeah. So don't use your birthday. Don't no. use family names. Family names, wife, husband, kids, even pet names. Don't use these things. Fish, don't call it fish. Not a good idea. No. Nope. Um, simple, like yeah. ABC123, of course. Don't Avoid want those. that. 123 ABC. Or okay. password. Yeah, don't use password. That's not good. You know, and something else is if people know you and they know the things that you're passionate and excited about, you shouldn't use those things either. So if you're into entertainment, you know, and, and if I know like your favorite author is Stephen King, is it? Yeah. No. He's a good one. But he's good, but not, yeah. he's not my favorite either. But anyhow, yeah. don't use, you know, Stephen King or something like that. If somebody knows you, knows your interests, you're into croquet or whatever it may be, don't use those. Yeah. That will be a dead giveaway. So what are some things that we should do, Jake? We should use, um, well, you can use like a phrase or a nonsense um, expression okay. that has nothing to do with a personal experience that people would right. know. Like, uh, well, you I, I came up with this one. Uh, Blue 2 Monkeys 3 Dorothy. Blue yeah. 2 Monkeys 3 Dorothy. I mean, it's simple. Uh, it's nice Wizard of Oz it, reference. Obviously, Wizard of Oz. Um, blue Monkeys and Dorothy, they fly around, they pick people up, they tear things apart. But I just threw in the 2 and the 3, and it has absolutely no connection to me because I don't really care much for the Wizard of Oz, unless, of course, it's played to the soundtrack of Pink Floyd. But Blue 2 Monkeys 3 Dorothy is easy enough for me to remember, and it was pretty high on the, on the scale there. Yeah. What's another thing besides expressions? Acronyms. So you take an expression and create an acronym. Just take the first letter of each part of it. So I have here capital T A four P E at H, and for me, capital that's T lowercase A four P E the at symbol H. So what in the world? It's just an expression. There are four purple elephants at home. That I just came up with. So, so you don't have. It's ridiculous. It sounds insane. But if I can yes, remember it. Because of its ridiculousness, and it creates a very secure 
password. Cool. Put that in, and it's it's in the it's upper. Pretty, it's pretty high up there. Yeah. Nice to know. You know, one of the things that one of the things that I use a lot, Jake. Those are definitely good. I like expressions, and sometimes you can even take your acronym and your expression, and then uh, mm. kind of make it very specific to the website. Yes. So that way, if your password gets hacked, it wouldn't be hacked for every single website. And the way that I right. do this is I let the website clue me in on what the password is. So let's say my normal password is 42 Spruce Goose. Okay. It's not a football reference or anything, but 42 Spruce Goose. And then I want to sign into the CMS Wiki. Okay, CMS. So I decided I'll take CMSW for CMS Wiki and then just drop 42 Spruce Goose on the end. And you can do that with anything. If I, if I log into the CMS email, it's CMSE42 Spruce Goose. So every website's a little bit different, and I let the website clue me in. That is brilliant. So now you have different, web, different passwords for every site. But they're going to be easily remembered, and you'll be able to, uh, yeah. Because I start with that expression, or, or I start with that acronym, and I just kind of nice. change the beginning a little bit. I make sure I'm using numbers. I can even I haven't thrown any symbols, but if I did, that would make it even higher. Yeah. So, so and again, go go to that website and uh, check it out, the passwordmeter.com, and you can type in the 42 Spruce Goose or anything else and see what uh, kind of security that you get out of it and kind of experiment. But changing changing each one makes it makes it really good. That way if, if they hack your email, they can't get into everything else. Yeah. Now there are a couple other uh, services out there that can generate passwords Password for generators. you. But um, you know, these ones are going to create some pretty crazy passwords. It's hard to remember. And again, this is the goal. A lot of people came to me this week, even just this past week and said, "I cannot remember all of my CMS emails, all my CMS codes that I have to remember because I'm a tech contact and I do all these things." So giving us some ridiculous string of numbers and symbols that makes no sense would be really hard. Yeah. So we mentioned them in our presentation here. We have links to like strongpasswordgenerator.com or grc.com. And they provide some, some really good secure passwords yeah. that are just off the charts in terms of the security. However, hard to remember. Yeah. Hard to remember. So it may be good for setting up a, like a wireless network at home or for that one financial account or something that you keep a hard copy of this password secured somewhere in a drawer in your safe wherever yeah. but I wouldn't recommend it for like your email or uh, any no. services you would now Jake you also have found uh, throughout your website searching uh, another way that I wasn't too sure about so another way to log into many web services now is to use your Google or Facebook account login. But doesn't that just go against what I was just saying or what we were just saying about having different passwords right. for different websites? So so what this requires okay. is that we understand that Google and Facebook logins, well, we're, we're assuming they're secure. They should be. So in order to assure that you are logging into a secure site there, you have to make sure that when you click on login using Google or using Facebook, that you actually go to the Google.com or Facebook.com domain. So if you're in that application right. or within that, that website, it shows that I'm in the Google or Facebook domain. Right. Now there are services out there that have a little button that says login using Google and when you click on it, it takes you somewhere else. You think it's Google, but the URL is not Google and if you actually fill in the information, it will uh, allow someone to receive your now, Google account. I, I've noticed this for people, you know, I've seen with Twitter as well, that, you know, it connects directly with my Twitter and it's not something I really am that, I don't care that much about my security, so I've not thought too much about it, but definitely, you know, if, if these are sites that are connected together, uh, like you use them in conjunction with one another, definitely a good way to, to not have to remember a billion website or a billion email or passwords, but to right. be able to, to know one and they're all connected. Another thing to consider with this is that ensure that when you're signing in, that the uh, at the beginning of the URL it says HTTPS okay. for secure. The secure part. But it's a uh, an encrypted transfer of information that you are putting in there. If it doesn't say S as you're logging in, just HTTP, it will send your your account information through uh, plain text. So that information is far more hackable and uh, easily retrieved from a third party. So uh, make sure that it's HTTPS when you sign into things. Now at CMS, everything that you sign into is HTTPS. Correct. Yes. Like wikis or even yeah. your email. So 
you know, with that, I would say get away from using one email, I'm sorry, one password for everything. Uh, really do your best. Uh, you know, what I found works for me may not work for you. That's why we wanted to have a, a bunch of different opportunities here. Uh, I like having one standard and then I keep changing the front. That works best for me uh, because then I know that my CMS email is not the same as my home email. Mm -hmm. So if anybody was to have access to my CMS email password, they couldn't use it on my home email password. So, you know, don't, don't do silly stuff like use family members names and things like that. And yeah. Definitely make sure that you're using uh, symbols and numbers and capital lowercase. Yes, Those variability. So definitely keep all those things in mind about passwords. Uh, you know, one final thing is you probably shouldn't write those passwords down on a piece of paper and leave it next to the computer. No, no, definitely not a not a good idea. You know, before we go, Jake, we do have something happening coming up at the end. Uh, I'm sorry, the beginning of August yes, for will. CMS Instructional Technology. Yeah, it's our Instructional Technology Conference. It'll be at Harding High School, and. Um, it's going to be a great time. We have over 200 people registered already. And we're looking for 700. Yes. So uh, I'm looking for 700. Uh, you can register in MyPD. You get one CEU for attending both days. Excellent conference. Uh, a lot of great resources, uh, presenters showing things from interactive whiteboard uh, technology to uh, Web 2.0 resources. There may even be some iPads. We're going to be uh, highlighting some of these uh, sessions over the uh, next week, actually. Yes. We'll highlight a few next week, so stay tuned for that if you're coming. Or even if you're not coming and you want to get on the waiting list, you're going to want to do that. So uh, next week, we'll be talking a little bit more about the CMS Instructional Technology 2011 Conference, and hopefully we can make that, stale, that title longer next time. Yeah. That's right. All right. Talk to you soon, man.